everyone. I am Brian Patrins Bailado, a level 2 nursing student of the University of the Visayas. And in this video, I will be performing my return demonstration on fundal height measurement and the estimates in pregnancy. I am going to perform how to compute the EDC or the expected date of confinement on a pregnant woman using the Nagel's rule and the date of beginning. I am also going to perform the procedure in estimating the age of gestation using the McDonald's rule and the Bartholomew's rule of force. So sit back and I shall begin this instant. Fundal height, or also known as the simpicil fundal height measurement, is the measured distance from the top of the pregnant uterus to the top of the symphysis pubis. It is used to indirectly measure fetal growth. Prior to the procedure, we have to prepare the equipment that we will be needing. This is to facilitate efficiency and organization in performing the procedure. So the equipment that we will be needing are first, road towel, gloves which is optional, and the most important is the non-elastic tape measure. Next is we provide patient privacy by closing all the doors and window and pulling down curtains. And then we proceed with performing hand hygiene to prevent cross-contamination. Now we are going to introduce ourselves and verify the client's identity. Good morning, ma'am. I'm Priyan Pailado, your student nurse for today. For verification, ma'am, may I ask for your name and your date of birth? I'm Jennifer Himarino. Your birthday is? Nine, June 8, 1995. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. The next step is to explain the procedure to the patient and ask her to empty her bladder. Explaining the procedure and providing information to the patient fosters trust and cooperation. If the patient has a full bladder, we ask her to avoid to encourage relaxation and to promote patient comfort throughout the procedure. Moreover, a distended bladder may reduce the accuracy of fundal height measurement. So, Ma'am Jen, allow me to explain the procedure that you will be doing today. So, today we are going to get your fundal height measurement. This is to so indirectly measure the growth of your baby and to validate your gestational age, which is 28 weeks. This procedure involves exposure of your abdomen. Is that okay? It won't hurt and it won't take very long. Yes, it's okay. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Jen. Now, would you like to pee to make sure that your bladder is empty? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now, we place the patient in a dorsal or cumbent position supine with knee slightly flexed to relax abdominal muscles. We also put a road towel on her back under her hips because she is at risk of supine hypotensive syndrome. Now we warm our hands and we ask the patient to relax. Ma'am Jen, you can help by just relaxing so that the procedure goes smoothly, okay? okay. Now, we ask the patient to bear her abdomen from the lower rib margin to the pubic bone. Exposure of the area that is to be assessed enables the nurse to obtain an accurate fundal height measurement. Okay, Ma'am Jen, I'm just gonna pull down this blanket. I'm gonna pull up your shirt, okay? Now, we stand at the patient's side and use one hand to hold the tape measure. This keeps good body mechanics and minimizes stretching, reaching, and bending. Ensuring an appropriate position allows the nurse to acquire an accurate fundal height measurement efficiently. Now, we're gonna hold the zero mark of the tape measure at the upper border of the symphysis pubis. This is to ensure that the nurse obtains an accurate fundal height measurement. Remember to use the centimeter side of the tape measure. And then with the other hand, we then take the extended measuring tape over the fundus, finding the fundus, and denote the measurement. 
We used the other hand so that one hand could still hold the other end of the tape measure at the upper border of the symphysis pubis. This is to ensure that the nurse obtains an accurate fundal height measurement. So we're gonna find the fundus. We're gonna fill it and it's here and we're gonna measure it. So from the upper border of the symphysis pubis to the top of the fundus, the measurement is 28 centimeters. Okay? And that correlates to 28 weeks. Okay, Ma'am Jen, I'm now going to pull down your shirt. You may now put your knees together and you may do whatever position that makes you feel comfortable. So after getting the fundal height measurement, we then proceed with doing the following. First is to compare the measurement to the weight gestation and two is to compare the measurement to the previous pregnancies if charts are available or if it is applicable. This is to ensure that the fundal height measurement correlates with the age of gestation. This helps to determine if the measurement is within the normal range or if there are any significant findings. This is to assess the baby's fetal growth and development and enables the nurse to indicate the reasons why a baby may measure too big or too small. So, Ma'am Jennifer's fundal height measurement is 28 centimeters, which actually correlates to her age of gestation of 28 weeks. So now, we will proceed with calculating the estimates in pregnancy. To compute the ADC or the expected date of confinement, we will first use the Nagel's rule. To do this, we will count back three calendar months from the first day of Mom Jennifer's LMP or last menstrual period and then we add seven days. So based on the records, Mom Jennifer's LMP was April 8th. So April is the fourth month in the calendar. So we will subtract 4 by 3 because we have to count back 3 calendar months. And that gives us 1. The first month in the calendar is January. So the EDC is January. To get the days, we will add 8 and 7 because again, the LMP was April 8th. 8 plus 7 equals 15. Therefore, January 15 of the next year is Mom Jennifer's expected date of confinement. Now, we will be computing the expected date of confinement using the date of quickening or the date in which the mother felt the first fetal movement. To compute the EDC of a prime gravida, we will add the date of quickening plus 4 months and 20 days. To compute the EDC of multi gravida, we will add the date of quickening plus 5 months and 4 days. Now, based on the records, this is Mom Jennifer's first pregnancy, so she is considered as preemie gravida. It was also recorded that the first perception of fetal movement or the date of quickening occurred at the 20th week of her pregnancy, which was on September 1 of this year. To compute Mom Jennifer's ADC, who is a preemie gravita, we are going to add 4 months and 20 days to September 1. Since September 1 is the ninth month in the calendar, we are going to add 9 plus 4. And that gives us 13. Since there are only 12 months in the calendar, we are going to subtract 13 by 12. And that gives us 1. Now, the first month in the calendar is January. So, the EDC is January. To get the days, we are going to add 1 and 20. Because the date of beginning was September 1. 1 plus 20 equals 21. Therefore, the expected date of confinement using the date of quickening is January 21 of the next year. 
So as you can see, the difference between the expected date of confinement using the Nagel's rule and the date of beginning are only days apart. January 15 for Nagel's rule and January 21 using the date of quickening. These dates are only estimates. This is not 100% accurate because it only aims to predict the estimated delivery date of a pregnant woman. Next is we are going to perform the procedure in estimating the age of gestation. First is the McDonald's rule. To do this, we are going to utilize the fundal height that we measured earlier, which is 28 centimeters. The formula for McDonald's rule is fundal height multiplied by 8 and then divided by 7. So, 28, which is the fundal height that we measured, times 8 divided by 7 equals 32. Therefore, based on the McDonald's rule, the gestational age is approximately 32 weeks. Next is we are going to determine the age of gestation by using the Bartholomew's rule of force. Bartholomew's rule of force measures the gestational age by determining the position of the fundus in the abdominal cavity. So Ma'am Jennifer's fundal height measurement is 28 centimeters. Her fundus is located in between the umbilicus and the siphoid process which is approximately 8 centimeters above the belly button. Therefore, based on Bartholomew's rule of force, the gestational age is around 28 weeks. And that is how we calculate the estimates in pregnancy. Now that we are done determining the expected date of confinement and the gestational age, we will then explain the findings to the patient because it is the patient's right to be informed of the findings. She needs to be informed, especially if there are significant findings because this establishes trust and rapport. Okay, so Mom Jen, your fundal height measurement correlates with your gestational age or how long your pregnancy is. There is no significant findings and based on the procedure that we did, the baby's growth and development are of normal range. Now since we're done with the assessment, we will then proceed with performing the hand hygiene to prevent cross-contamination. And lastly, we document the results because documentation provides ongoing data collection and comparison. The, res the results will serve as a reference for the nurse in implementing the care plan because accurate and detailed written records is the foundation of an efficient nursing action. my return demonstration for fundal height measurement and estimates in pregnancy. Thank you for watching!